And a very good morning, <laughs> a rather damp and a rather murky Saturday morning to you wherever you're watching in the world, you're very welcome. Uh, this is Mark James standing stage side on stage eight of the Danoon Presents Argyle Rally. It's the, I was going to say penultimate, it's not, it's round five of the 2023 Pro, Pro Tire Motorsport UK Asphalt Rally Championship. If you were with us last night, you'd have been with us in the dark and the rain and the midges of stage three. Quite a dramatic evening last night, uh, but uh, two daylight stages for you today. We're both uh, this stage, which is the second of the day, and then uh, we'll move on to the uh, same stage this afternoon, second stage in the final loop. And I'm just looking at producer Wayne for a thumbs up. All looking good? Just trying to get the second camera, but I'm not sure. Ah, uh, okay. So let me introduce my co-commentator, my minder, my carer, who was with me last night, uh, co-driver extraordinaire, Phil Sandham. Phil, once again, you're very welcome, as we can hear the echo of a rally car coming up.
Lee Phil, thanks to the, uh, the, the Scottish lads who helped us carry all the kit. Uh, we were delayed parking up because of uh, there's some, some forestry. No, we were here and they weren't happy letting us in so in the end that was all resolved but it meant that we were up against time a little bit so they gave us a hand with all the kit and lumping it across country to get to where we are so guys if you're watching we really do appreciate your help this morning yeah <laughs> if, if you knew what the weight of uh, weighing equipment was you would uh, shake your head in disbelief all clever technology okay so from from fiestas to a citroen then car 15 Kitchen. Yep, yep 15. Young and uh, Alan Cathers. We spoke last night about how yep. they've been together such a long time and they were going well there. Scottish Championship contenders. Yeah. Obviously, we're here to focus on the pro tyre competitors because this is round five, as I mentioned earlier on. Uh, opening round on the East Riding. Then it was the <laughs> double header on the Isle of Man. Then there was the Jim Clark. And uh, then it's this one, then the down rally, and then we finish off in the seaside, at the seaside in West Wales, the Rally Ceredigion, on a double header to round off the season at the beginning of September. Now, before we go any further, a little bird called Darren Atkinson <laughs> tells me today's a very special day, Phil. Yes, yeah, another, another year further on in my life. <laughs> I've reached, yes, I've reached uh, another, another birthday. Congratulations. Happy birthday from all of us at uh, Pro Tire and at Special Stage. 74 years young today. Thank you very much. Yes, I am. Just thought I'd point that out. <laughs> Happy birthday, Phil. Thank as we you. see car seven, the Impreza working its way up towards us. Yeah, down, down. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Do you know, it's so much easier to see the cars when A, they're in daylight, and B, we're not fighting off the midges. True. There's plenty of time for that, though. <laughs> oh, isn't there just? Um, quite misty, though. We, we arrived probably about hour, hour and a half ago, I guess, before the, uh, before the stage closing car came through. And uh, we drove up. It's quite a different stage in character to the one we were on last night, because that one had been resurfaced, we think, probably within the last year or so. Nice smooth tarmac, but it had bedded in, so not shiny tar. This one, not so much. It's very narrow, broken tarmac in places. Really a horrendous stage for a driver to, to, to drive on. Bumpy. Uh, inconsistent surface. Yeah, it's, it's a real driver's stage. You've got to be really on it to, to get through here with no problems. This is Mark, Mark McCulloch. Yes. I don't know why they seem to be out of order. It's uh, some reason, obviously. Well, I was expecting if they if they've reseeded this morning on um, on the uh, rally positions, you'd have thought Callum would be first on the road, as you were saying, but. Uh, not so much. Let me well, Vinny's not been through, has he? he uh, Hugh Brunton, went, he went off yesterday. Hugh Brunton, Jock's been through. Finney Retson went off. We said we've been into the fence. There's a few misses there. Yes. Yes. It was this, this stage, wasn't it, last night, but run the other way round. And I think they ran it as a 15 miler last night, and they've split it into two this morning. Yes. So it's uh, it's providing us with two tests today. Yeah, exactly the same as last year. Same same format. Yeah, the, the long stage on the Friday nights are real. It's a real killer, really. It's a long stage, very long. Yeah, it's, it's better when it's quite split into two. It, uh, you can just get a break between the two stages. Yeah. Who's this? This is uh, Proctor. I think Kevin Proctor. Oh, yeah, Kevin Proctor. Patrick Walsh. <coughs> Yep, car 14, Kevin Proctor and Patrick Walsh, Proctor, yeah. as we said last night. Um, Patrick, one of those um, one of those co-drivers whose name just keeps on popping up. A bit like your good self, Phil. <laughs> yeah, he's a lot more experience than me, though. Yeah, he's a real good, nice bloke, is Patrick. Helped me quite a bit over me this last few years, over my uh, career. <laughs> you could call it that. Yeah, he's a nice fella. And Kevin Proctor's a beer on the So I think I'm looking for a captain's person, at least. Well, you did say to me yesterday before the rally started you fancied Callum Black for the win and Callum had a bit of a steady start yesterday but then by the end of last night particularly on that long one he'd uh, opened up a lead of 11 seconds I've got what I believe is the overalls after stage seven Callum Black has opened up another couple of seconds leads now by 14 seconds over David Wright Neil Roskell third a further 19 seconds back well see what the time is for this at this stage now it'll, it'll give you a bit of an, a, a, an idea what's going to happen Michael Brinney, Michael Brinney and Claremore. Uh, yeah, 
Because your lawn was quite a short stage, the first one after the... Yep, the six, six overall after stage seven. And where were we? Because I was talking to Brad Cole this morning. He was 10th overall, first in class. He slipped to 14th overall, second in class behind your man, Darren Atkinson. Oh, smile on your face. <laughs> no, I don't really, Darren. He's a very calculated driver. We'll see what happens anyway. Yeah. Okie doke. So um, let me just see if uh, we've got any stage times from... I think you've got to follow Neil Roskell. Like. He'll, he'll, he'll keep plugging away, plugging away. He'll be a top three, I would imagine. He's, a, he's quite consistent. I think Callum Black's taken another second out of David Wright on this stage. Mm -hmm. He now leads by 15 seconds. It was 14. Mm -hmm. Neil Roskell still third, 34 off the lead. Rory Young in the Citroen, 111 down on Callum Black and Jock Armstrong and Hannah McKillop. Fifth overall, 252 down. But of course, uh, a lot of drivers still to compete this stage. It's uh, Patterson, really. Patterson and Tom Hind, local, well, local crew, Scottish crew, SRC. We, we make sure we get everything. And, uh, obviously, only the people, me and you here now, know that there's a 15 second delay. Everybody else watching from anywhere else in the world has no idea. There we are. See, there's, there's a quote from this morning from Darren Atkinson saying steady, keeping in touching distance of Brad. Now, for, according to those stage time from seven, Darren's actually got him, he's, uh, he's leading his class. We just don't know that's bad might have spun, something like that. Oh, on stage seven, shot. yeah. It's quite easy to do. Second, isn't it? But uh, let's yeah, have a look. Ah, no, that, those were quotes from the end of day one, apologies. Right. So David Wright keeping it in the middle of the road, happy to be here, and Darren Atkinson steady, keeping in touching yeah. distance of Brad. Here he comes. <clears throat> Now you are running a split time on this. Let's run this one. They do sound fit, don't they? Two point five. Down to oh, were you, were you running a split time on that? Yeah, just no, no. It's the first time I've, I've started ah, to okay. watch on it. Yeah. And here we go. Entry lists getting soggy again. Just before we started the live stream. The rain came in probably a couple of minutes before, and then it eased off, and it's just started coming in again. So unfortunately, because we're working off good old-fashioned paper, that's now looking distinctly soggy. But uh, uh, we're OK. Umbrella's up, no midges as yet, so we're doing better than last night. And we can see. <laughs> yep, see who can. Another car on the way. This is uh, Hill. Oh. Is it Richard Hill? Same time as Brad, William Hill, that is. Yeah. Anyway, going for a finish and points. Yeah. Richard Morton Crozier in the co driver's seat, mm. both registered for Pro Tire. I mentioned last night it was something like 71 drivers registered for the championship. And I'm sure if Paul Morris is, uh, is listening, he'll update me on the number of co drivers as well. But that's a healthy old number registered for a championship, isn't it? Pretty impressive, yeah. We turned the championship round this last night. I mentioned this last night. They're doing a fantastic job on the team. Uh, Paul, Donna, and Paul Wakeley. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. And uh, I hope it's well supported next year, too. I think they're getting the moment, they're getting themselves sorted out for what, what rounds are going to count next year. So there seems to be quite a few rallies. New tarmac rallies being thought about and put into action to be, be to be run, so yeah. it should be quite exciting next year. As Lee Hastings coming. That's the end time. <coughs> okay, we're struggling with the mobile signal. Oh, Marty Booth, I do have uh, some comments just starting to come through. Marty Booth, morning all. Cam Young, is it raining? Oh, yes. Carol Martin Thompson, watching from France, haven't come home from Le Mans yet. Carol, oh, come home. Uh, Jamie Vaughan, watching from Kenya. Oh, are you in Kenya, Jamie? You didn't mention it. Morning to everybody working out on the, uh, on the safari rally. Chris Williams saying, yep, yeah, reseed overnight. First of, what did we say, two or three Hyundais last night? Yeah, I think about three. I'll say he's up on town. 
It's only half fives how much quicker they are on the twisty stuff. You break in later. Donna says happy birthday, Phil. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. <laughs> I'll keep an eye on the comments. But uh, the issues here, unfortunately, are those of connectivity. Rain has got the uh, the old satellite view working, which is how we're to this morning, but good old-fashioned mobile coverage. So I'll have to check things like the, the comments and the live timing. Not so much. If you're just joining us, a very good morning. You're welcome to the second stage of the day. We're on stage eight of the Dunoon Presents Rally Argyle. It is the fifth round of the Pro Tire <coughs> Motorsport UK National Asphalt Championship. It's Mark James and Phil Sandham stood alongside me in the... Has it stopped raining again? I was going to say in the murk and the mist and the top of, of the hill. Five seconds up on Brad. Five up on Brad, yeah. Very consistent drive. You don't often see Wayne going off the road. A good partnership there. Do you know, that was one of those things. We were, we were driving up here this morning and it was... Now, do you remember John Stone went off there and, yeah. and uh, Neil Kelly went off there? And so yeah. this stage is yeah. quite well known, but for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, even even uh, two years ago when I did it with, with the rally with this, this stage, especially with Keith Rolf and his, his Q5 at Audi, and we came up, coming, tickling up the stage doing the recce, and there was a, a, a funny noise and a big bang, and a, a, a hole appeared in the, in the sump. So that was the car we were wasted, basically, pulled off the road and waited for the lift back to base. Uh, a very expensive recce, that. I can imagine, the Q5. So we're on... Um yeah, here's your my boy. Sounding good. Same time as Brad. Same as Brad, yeah. Oh, slow it down, Jim. <laughs> That's you, that is. That's your seat. <laughs> Darren Atkinson then, currently leading Brad Cole in... Still B13, isn't it? Over two yeah. litres. So, just to recap then, six stages planned yesterday. A couple of little ones around Dunoon itself, which ran. We were on uh, Tarzan Dam, which was stage three, the first proper stage, so a five and a half miler. And then uh, Kinloch Rua ran for the first time, two and a half miler. Didn't run for the second time. And then, as we said, Otter Ferry, the 14 miler, not 15, as I said earlier, uh, that did run for about eight or nine cars. John Stone went off and uh, the stage was stopped, and then by the time they got everything sorted out, uh, everybody else had a notional time and went through in convoy. And then we've had one stage so far this morning, Glendaroo 1, and we're on uh, Bealach Mame 1. And my apologies for my appalling Scottish pronunciation. Spanish flag I saw in the window alongside the co-driver's name. <laughs> so yeah, so this stage, which was a 14-miler last night, split into two. Bialach Mame, nearly five miles, and then uh, a six-and-a-half-miler. And, a half and uh, yes, we did mention earlier that David Hamlet and David Henderson had a problem in the first stage this morning. Confirmation from Paul Morris on WhatsApp. David Henderson stopped in that first stage this morning, so... Already casualties from the uh, from the second morning of the rally, from the, the rally second day. A loop of four stages back to Danoon for service and then the same four stages this afternoon <coughs> before a finish back in Danoon at around about five o'clock. Archie Swin's going the box all at him with... Uh, this has been seriously yeah, reseeded, hasn't it? Yes, oh, it's been really well. <laughs> yeah, 45, yeah. Archie Swin score. I see have stayed in the UK, and that's pretty much all we've got. But they were they were nice little cars, those Adams. We've got them sorted, especially Archie's and uh, Robert Crowlock's car. They both seem to finish every every rally and set fantastic times. Robert Crowlock was out on the keeler stages last week and got a really top twenty top twenty st uh, finish, which is good. Yep. And they the beating two wheel drive cars with. 100 brake more, most more. It's amazing. There's Sam Adams here from Northern Ireland. In the escort. And Michael Johnson, very experienced co driver. Both pro tire, pro tire registered. His first season in the, in the pro tire championship. Nice lad to talk to. 
not for cautious. Yeah, very good. Right, let's have a few more times then from the end of this stage. Then Callum Black and Jack Morton having uh, extended their lead ever so slightly over David Wright and Paula Swinsco. So Callum Black now leads by 15 seconds after stage eight. Uh, Neil Roskell, Andrew Roughhead third, 34 down on the leader. Mark McCulloch, Michael Hendry in fourth and Proton. So 32 minutes exactly elapsed time over the stages for them. So fourth, one minute and 11 down. Exactly the same time as Rory Young and Alan Cathers in effectively fifth and then sixth is Michael Binney and Claire Mole John Wink Neil Shanks in the Hyundai are seventh William Hill and Richard Morton Crozier eighth in the Rally 3 Fiesta <coughs> then it's Kevin Proctor and Patrick Walsh and then Wayne Sisson and Peredia Davis rounding off the top ten so what you call Barry Groundwater in the Evo yep Barry, Barry with Ashley Will yep. so Scottish Championship we're obviously covering the, the Proton competitors, the Pro Tire, <laughs> Proton, <laughs> the Pro Tire competitors predominantly, but uh, obviously we've got uh, Scottish Championship contenders going through as well. And uh, we know that there are uh, also some live streams uh, around from the uh, Scottish Championship, our colleagues doing that live stream. So uh, you can potentially hop around. We will be back on air this afternoon anyway uh, to cover this stage. Uh, when it's run as the second of the afternoon loop of stages. Let me just refresh the results. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. This isn't good news, Phil, for you. Darren's dropped a second in class again behind Brad. So Brad and Neil Coleman, 33 minutes, 13 seconds in total. Darren and Mark Twinname, eighth, no, where are we? 14th overall, second in class, 33-17. Darren has dropped eight seconds to Brad in stage eight, says Paul Morris. Thank you, Paul. So we'll try and find out why. But as you said, when they went past us, he was pretty much bang on. Yeah, um, obviously. You just know what's happened to you, like. He could have gone straight on or spun or whatever. Oh, eight seconds is a long way to go, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, looking at producer Wayne, we're about halfway through the stage here, aren't we, Wayne? Something like that? About two thirds, maybe? Mm. We're not even halfway through the stage, are we? So it's after he's passed us that he's lost that eight seconds, potentially. Hmm. You can hear an escort Second coming, can't you? Lost something like that. Yeah. Was I saying escort? Clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, but is this the clear with the. Escort engine. Josh Evans, no. That did sound very escort like, he says yeah. in his defence <laughs> as it came up the hill towards us. If I can describe a Mull Car Club. Yeah. We, we, we made, we probably were sponsored by Mull Car Club last night, the, the number of references we gave to them. Um, but no, if you can imagine the. The stage, uh, we actually drove through the stage that we were on last night to get here this morning. Uh, we turn off the main road. Stage start is uh, a couple hundred yards off the, uh, the main road and then uh, across the, the valley floor and then starts the long climb and we're pretty much at the, the highest point of the stage here. We were a bit concerned about the mist this morning but that, fingers crossed, seems to have cleared. Mm. 46 coming towards us. John Nanderson and Harry Stubbs. Yeah, another Impreza. Yeah, Scottish Championship edition. Highland Park has run. Going quite well, is not it? And I think if you said to most rally fans, describe an Impreza to me, that's the shape, that's the model that they would remember, because that's the, that's the kind of the, the, the original Colin McRae World Championship era car. And then they, then they went through the various bug-eyed creations, and then. Then there's the, the hatchback version that we kind of don't really mention. Yeah. Yeah, I did a few events in, a, in the hatchback version with Nigel Feeney. A decent car, and here's uh, John Rintel in the... Another, another car that you've uh, done events in? That's the XWRC Mini. Fabulous car. Seems to be getting the hang of it now after a couple of years. Yep. Lovely motor. John and Ross Hind alongside him. Yeah. Car 31. Whose who's father-in-law? Oh, his father. 
sits in with uh, Patterson, Willie Patterson, who went through earlier in the Siskova. You know, you know not only everybody, but you know their siblings, their wives, <laughs> their fathers, their jobs. Matt Pierce comment on uh, the Facebook page. Camera doesn't really show how sketchy those roads are. Serious hard work. Sketchy is a good word, Phil. Definitely. Yeah, it's uh, it's like a patchwork quilt, basically, where we're stood. Grass in the middle on some places, broken tarmac. A lot of patching, I think, had gone on as well. Yes, yes, they have. This is uh, what's that? 51. This is John McKean and Charlotte McDowell. Uh -huh. and Charlotte's father is um, our, our MSA scoutineer, who usually, I think he was course guard today, actually, and uh, was in Donegal last week with Shauna, Shauna McHale, Shauna Hale, sorry. And uh, does a lot of rallying. Charlotte does a lot of rallying. Sits in mostly with with Joe. Joe does a lot of rallying. He's, he's quite prevalent at the moment. And the has got a couple of cars on there. He's had a couple, two or three cigarettes. This, this one he's got his bees and knees by all accounts. And there I was talking about the various models of, of yeah. Subaru. That's the kind of the middle one, which didn't have the the bug eye, the, the headlights, did it? No, no. That's I like that one. That's the best one. I think. Here you go, here's Jerry Fritzl. He was trying last night. It's a Millington engine car. He got a lot faster over the last two years. Now it's about the same time as Brad. <laughs> Look to be fighting it there. We, talk, we talked last night about our international viewers. We had somebody watching in the States. Uh, we had somebody watching in Australia. So we've already had somebody in France who's uh, delaying her return from Le Mans. We've also got David Roberts watching in Saudi Arabia. Morning, David. Or oh, afternoon, I guess. Seven, eight, eight, seven hours for a lot of people. Middle of the afternoon. Numbers are your game, you see. No, I, just, I just talk. Can't be seven hours. A seven-hour flight. <laughs> Probably about three hours, four, three hours tops. He'll tell us. Come back to us. David, David will tell us. <laughs> As I said to you last night, if there's something we don't know or we speculate about, we'll be corrected, don't yes, worry. Yes. I can lay one out there to be corrected, which is quite good, really. Let me have a quick look at YouTube as well, because um, I apologised last night that we weren't on YouTube last night. Jess Campbell in the Peugeot. On YouTube watching is uh, Indonesia and Malaga in Spain. Uh, Troy Hood says happy birthday, Phil. Have a good one. Oh, thank you. Uh, Troy is in Duns. And, yep, quite a few watching on, on YouTube, so happy to say. And I'm sure producer Wayne is relieved that we are going out on YouTube this morning. Uh, unlike last night, where we had to change, force majeure I think uh, they call it, that uh, the forecast last night was shocking, although in the end we didn't get the thunder and lightning we were expecting, but uh, of course with hindsight we'd have been stuck in that last stage, so... Um, Good choice. And we, uh, yeah, and actually where we were with that jump last night was a, was a decent spot to watch. We had some fantastic uh, helpers, didn't we? Oh yeah, those, uh, those lads who did some gardening for us. Yeah, put down a few bushes for us so we got a good, good view and really helpful. Kevin Dunn. to hop on the Civic as well and he's quick in both cars. He's a guy that passes on us on the Jim Clark a yeah, yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, the lads uh, they had cans in there and they were drinking they had a few few cans like and afterwards they picked all the cans up. Yeah. Tied you up, put them in a box and took them away. It was really good and proper yeah. spectators. Yeah I was gonna say spectators on a number of events could uh, could learn from them. And as I mentioned earlier on we were helped up this morning by uh, I think every spectator we've met so far has been absolutely spot on this weekend. Um, they've been really, really helpful, uh, happy to see us, chatting about how things work and um, how we use satellite and all sorts of stuff. So, no, really good. So, uh, uh, big <coughs> thumbs up. Now, that cloud seems to be lifting, Phil, mm. or am I tempting fate, do you think? Well, it does do, yeah. It's, it's forecast to get a little bit brighter in about an hour. Sun, sunny this afternoon, seemingly, according to the forecast. So, fingers crossed. Who's this one? Holman <laughs> Smith, the Isle of Man lad. 
Yeah, yeah, with David, David Evans alongside. Now, he was running out of order last night. Now, in terms of the, the reseed this morning, uh, he's running pretty much where we'd expect him to be. All right, let me just refresh the times. So, just to confirm then, Callum Black, if he's just joining us, leading the rally by 15 seconds. Oh, he's spun on the next one. What, on the, on the next one? Or on this one? Oh. Ah, OK. Is it Callum? No, no. Because uh, we're stood alongside producer Wayne on the first camera shot that you see. The second camera is with cameraman Phil. And so Phil has, uh, has caught uh, the Evo having a bit of an indiscretion. He's, off, he's still off, is he? Yeah, he's still off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, let me wander around. Oh, yeah. Come around, Phil, if you can see. Steve Orman Smith in a ditch, struggling to get going, so the spectators slowing down the fiesta as it picks its way past. That's frustrating. Now, are they going to be able to get um, the Evo back on? as uh, Phil repositions. Good, spectators are with it. I'm not sure that four of them's going to be enough. Nope. Go on, boys. Go on, lads. Go on. He's nearly yeah, there. He's yes, he's done no it. Way. Good. Well done, lads. Excellent. They've got him back on. Yeah, yeah, he's back on. So, spectators shouting to us around the corner what's going on. Charmers and Barry Young, the Scottish registered champion registered crew, Subaru and Pretzer, Island Car Club lads. Hmm, interesting. It's getting dry, isn't it? So he's looking at Wayne, so he just slid right and came around that, that right hander. And he's slid off. <coughs> So of all the stages and all the corners, he does it in front of cameraman Phil. <laughs> well done, Steve. Another Evo, car 41. Johnny, oh, Johnny McKay. Yep. In like a cook tank. Oh, oh they got a good finish. We nice to see him finish well. The Scottish registered champion, championship registered big yeah, yeah. crew from Stonehaven. Yeah, and then you uh, seven. Now we talked about this last night, and you said, because I didn't want to, I didn't want to say your favourite driver, but I did say favourite car, and you did say Evo Nine was your favourite. Was it your gravel favourite? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe Evo Seven is quite. They've got attractive, uh, active diffs on those cars. If you get an earlier Evo, like an Evo Six or Five, I think they're like solid, so they're not as much traction. But the the Nine last Evo Nine I went in was fantastic. You just you put it on anywhere you want. So a really comfortable car as well. So that's what impressed me about it. I really enjoy sitting in one. It's always come to the Lord's room to put your gear, which is you put your helmets in the back seat, open the back doors and put them in. There's most escorts, you just can't do that. Michael Harbour, he's an up and coming driver. He's getting faster on each event. He's doing this Pro Tire Championship as well. Yeah, sporting the Pro Tire Sunstrip. Yeah. So it's a nice, easy way for us to spot the uh, registered competitors. Next page, 64. That's, that entry list is really starting to see feel better days, isn't it? You're running about eight years. Just a youngster, I think. <laughs> yeah. I think what I was doing eight years ago. <laughs> Your first stage event, 18, 1981, but you you drove on night events, on road rallies, didn't you? Yeah, I did road rally rallies. I started in, I think, 60, 68, 60, 68, 7, 68, and doing 12 car rallies. Then I started doing proper rallies, road rallies in about 1970. And then the various three or four cars I had, and then I gave up in 79. I won the our local car club championship call the other day as I was going into business. And that's when I got the call in 81 to sit in to some sit in somebody with somebody. Santa Nellery. I'm 
to the gallery. Yeah. She's uh, there. The pro tailor. Yeah, Richard Bonner alongside him. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I drove a, a Mini, then a Mini Cooper S, which had all the straight cut box limited slip diff, 1293 engine. And uh, I bought a Vauxhall Friends, a bit like King Throckham's driving. Uh, and then after that, I got a, a Chevette, a 1300 year old Chevette. And trans just when uh, Vauxhall dealer T DTV were moving into Chevettes, and I bought a fancy front end to it. and. Uh, after a few engine blow ups, the 1300 wasn't really competitive. I put a, I built a, a Manta engine, I put a 1900 cc Manta engine into it with a Manta back axle on it, which improved things. I got some really good results on the night rallies. Yeah. A little twinkle in your eye though, and you said, and oh, I just, you know, dropped the Manta engine into it and it went better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see the Manta, uh, the Scorner engine, sorry, Scorner. Yeah. Morrison, he's running first, he's well, well down. 34. Yeah, I thought he'd been going better than he has been doing. Where are you going, Morrison? Yeah, maybe he had problems. He's running down the field a bit, isn't he? Don't know what he's like on the results. Is that, oh, not Sam Adams. That's 34. Else? Mm. Sorry. <laughs> I thought he'd been through before. I must have been uh, just moving really last time. I must have been in before. Right? Okay. So, uh, don't, don't tell me you're fallible. No, definitely. Frequently. Don't worry, I'm, <laughs> I make enough mistakes. You're allowed to have the odd one. Yeah. We did say last night, good mix of cars. Oh, and uh, certainly towards the, the second half of the field, what did we have in the end? Three cadets in the end? I think we did, yes. Yeah, uh, that's an S2000, that. John Morrison, Highland Car Club, and Sinclair Young. Yeah. Or R5. You can have different spoilers on the back of the Fiestas, which sort of tells you what sort of what, what they are. Yeah, yeah. There's the early S two thousands, and then there's the uh, the latest R fives of the square wheel arch in the back, and the early ones of the rounded wheel arch in the middle. Yeah, that's it. The various engines. Phil, you anorak, you. <laughs> Here we are, stood out on a Scottish hillside on a drizzly old Saturday morning talking about square wheel arches. That's it. And the world is a good place at the moment. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, what have we got in? Another escort, Mark to escort. Yeah. This is uh, Andrew... Uh, what is his name? Andrew Bird, I think. Is it Andrew Bird, yeah, and Club Cullen. Seconds down to there after about two and a half mile to uh, Brad. Yep. It's going to be a fair chunk of the time we get there, 15, 20 seconds of the time we get to the end of the field. Right, let me just check for gossip, first of all, from Mr. Morris, who's able to tell me. Um, so, Darren had a plan to try and take a couple of seconds of stage out of Brad. He took more than that in the first stage this morning. Um, well, Darren dropped eight seconds to Brad in stage eight. Darren now four seconds behind Brad, which we knew. And then let's whiz back very quickly to the comments on the Facebook page to say hello to everybody this morning, see if I, any of our ramblings or questions have been answered. Oh, and on it as well. Yeah, that's Mark Holmes. <laughs> yeah. Here we are talking about Saudi Arabia, which incidentally, from Manchester to Riyadh, takes eight hours and 45 minutes. Did yeah. you know that? Oh, you said, you said, you thought seven, seven, seven hours. Yeah. And then Dean Roskell, now there's a surname. Morning to you, Dean. Watching from Blackpool. <laughs> Your neck of the woods. <laughs> and Aspie de la Zouch. Andy Cook is watching, so we literally have viewers all over the world. From Saudi Arabia, from Ashby de la Zouche. I didn't realise we had so many viewers and listeners. Yeah, yeah. Which is what I'm saying, is if we've got a question, or if we, if, if we get something wrong, <laughs> no, if we speculate, we, we never get anything wrong, if we speculate and we maybe don't quite get it as it should, then we'll be corrected quite quickly. Sure. Or someone <laughs> will come up with the answer. It never ceases to amaze me. And also the, 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 the calibre of the 
the, the response is, it's not just, you know, they know. <coughs> so here's you and I standing on a, on a mountainside, on a hillside in Scotland. Somebody will actually say, I worked on that car, or I drove that car, or I built that yeah, car. Yeah. So, uh, no, always grateful for, for comments, and uh, it's always good to know you're there. What was that, Wayne? Oh. Oh, is that on YouTube? He's just commented on the Facebook. Ah. One rally yet. Well, let me just refresh in that case. I guess we're at 15th overall last night, but we ain't top three. David Wright's retired, and uh, Dean Roskell's just commented, David Wright has retired. Thank you, Dean. Uh, we know m no more than that, and you know more than Paul Morris does, although Paul, I dare say, will message us very shortly if he gets any news. First of the three cadets I mentioned. Wow. That's the first of the cadets they've gone to, uh, Alan McDowell. I can't remember what nobody concentrated. Oh, apologies, on YouTube I'm told that the sound and picture is not in sync. So, looks at Wayne. Wayne, Wayne pulls a not quite sure face. There's a comment, third day looks smooth. Hope Thierry will manage top ten today, choosing the right tyres. Mm, maybe not the right stream. Oh, I don't know. Five on your previous core driving, just mentioned this last, this last night. 55 Robert, Robert Adamson, yeah. Last year, our year before, both two years, he's done a lot of forest events. I think Jamie Edwards used to sit in with him. Jamie Edwards, he's, yeah, now there's a name to, to conjure with. Jamie now is historic European historic championship because I think he's on an event this weekend. For the, I think I saw something from, from him on Facebook yesterday. Fresh from doing his first deal of Allegheny, you and Aaron New become second overall on that. He's, he's teamed up with Aaron and doing very well. Now we touched on this yesterday because you mentioned the pro tyre, obviously Paul Morris still an active co-driver, Jamie's still an active co-driver and there he is involved in the uh, the European Historics. He's a busy lad, very experienced, yeah. Who's this number? 15? 54 this is. 54, it's David Hardy and John McCullough, yeah. That's a Millington, a Millington in that, that's... Um, Mark McCullough's father co-driving for uh, David. When I was with uh, Darren a few, three years ago on the Isle of Man, uh, David rolled in front of us, come around the bend, and he was on his side with his R5. I don't think he did any rallies after that with the R5. He gave it for a few months and then he's come back with that. There are, as usual, a lot of this event, but also, we noticed, we commented last night, if you weren't with us last night, or maybe you left us early in the uh, in the live stream, a couple of Mark 1s, lots of minis towards the end. You definitely had a, had a, a twinkle in your eye when the minis were going through. Yeah, yeah. This is, you remember sitting like a, a square box on four wheels. Yeah, it was quite an experience. <laughs> Cost 75, this is, another Evo. Five. 75 is Orin McDonald, Highland Car Club. Oh, let's have a quick look. Somebody's off, says Wayne. Oh, exactly the same as... Uh, oh, nose down this time. Marshall's coming into play again. But you know that the back end of that car is just sticking out a little bit more than Steve Orman Smith did. That's not going anywhere without some spectators. Co-driver and both out of the car. So need to slow down. So whoever's next up, just need to be aware that uh, 
There's a car off just round the next corner. It's the KA. We talked about this last night, didn't we? Yeah, Ian Fogan. Still going. It's that 24, isn't it? Let's have a quick look at them as they go around the corner. That's Ian Fogan and Ewan Lees. Sorry, Phil, let me just squeeze past. Let's, have, let's see how he gets on. Yeah, we might have some sound sync issues, but we can't do anything about it without stopping everything. No. So we'll just leave it as it is for now. Okay. You might catch up. Ah, he's through. He's, uh, he's not, as, uh, not as bad as I thought. So the KA squeezes past. And uh, I'm not sure if you caught that from, from Wayne, but uh, we believe there are some sound sync issues. Our apologies but I'm afraid we're going to have to just press on through them rather than uh, stop and restart. 82. 82, and that is Jonathan Stepney and Alan Davis in the Pro Tire Trio score. Should be able to squeeze through. I was just a little bit concerned that the the back end of that Eva was just sticking out too much. Okay, I wonder if uh, the guys down at uh, Rally HQ are, are watching the live stream and just thinking, mm, not quite sure where that. Uh, I mean, the cars are picking their way past, but it's not a great place to be on the outside of that, uh, that downhill right-hander. No. 38, I think that is. Oh, David Evans has commented. I'll come back to that in a sec. Sam, that one. 38. Scott Peacock. Okay, Craig Wallace. Scottish championship register. Let's just have a quick... Look at the WhatsApp group. Uh, David Evans, we've lost over a minute after sliding off the road, struggling without a working diff. Ah. Now, David, you remember, was with um, with Steve in the <coughs> silver, was it? Or white Evo that went off exactly the same place, but going the other way, so nose up the hill. And they managed to get going again. Good. Good, good. That's good to see that they're back on the way as well, so... Yeah. Well, no, the uh, the red, red Evo's back on the road. 36 coming towards us. Here's Smith and Nicky Anderson. Both the Scottish Championship registry. I think he used see, to drive a Honda Civic at that land. I'm sure. You see, we were talking about Impressas earlier on and the different models. If somebody said to me, Pick your favourite Evo. That's the kind of that's my era. But yeah. you see, but in my day, it was red and white, and it had Tommy on the bonnet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, an earlier Evo, wasn't it? Yeah, he was that when he first sort of come through to be noticed. I, I said to I think a friend of mine said he's going to be a champion on these days. He's just a guest like, but it just seemed to be so talented. And he didn't do it, did he? But the number of times that he had luck on his side, like the whole business with Carlos Sainz. You know, Tommy was packed up and he was on the way to the airport yes. and the Finnish TV crew were with him when the phone rang and for some reason they kept the camera running and it was Tommy's brother going, you're world champion. Carlos has stopped right in front of me, car's blown up. Lewis has put his helmet through the back screen in Margam. Our oh, second uh, cadet. Second of the cadets. Oh, we're on 76. And that is Pat Johnson from Malton Car Club and Kevin Barney. Did you ever rally? Yeah, you must have rallied in a cadet. Never been in one, no, never. Really? No, on a few cars, I haven't been in. We had Lancia Evo, an inch garlic. Yeah. Um, Subaru R RX Turbo. RX Turbo? The RX Evo, We didn't finish, obviously. <laughs> we didn't do one of those. What was the tiny little Subaru? It was the Vivio. Yeah, I think Colin it, McRae it, did the, the, su safari, the Safari yes. in one. Yeah. And it was like one of those kind of, it was one of those that kind of, what do you strap to your other foot kind of thing. It was an absolutely tiny car, but it was in the proper blue and gold with the 555 up the side and everything else. I mean, okay, I think he retired probably the 
second competitive section, which is apt at the moment, obviously, because Safari's on. Mm -hmm. But um, when you think of some of the slightly bizarre rally cars that there have been over the years, there's, there's been a few. You only got to look at the, uh, is it Gilburn Invader? Oh, you, yes. Uh, Le Mans last year, this yeah. year, is it this year or last year? He's been on a couple of events recently and he goes very quick. It's pretty good to watch. See, I'm surprised we haven't got any Darians out this weekend because I remember doing, I did a couple of events with um, with Damien Cole in mm. two different Darians. Um, and whenever we've done rounds, certainly last year of the Pro Tire, there's always been at least one Darian kind of tucked away there somewhere. None this weekend, sadly. So it doesn't seem to be, no. I don't know, I don't know the reason why. Maybe the, the conditions don't suit the Darian. Very narrow and twisty and bumpy. Uh, if I, said, like fast if, stuff, don't they? if I said Gilburn to you, yeah, you'd know what I was talking about. Yeah, Gilburn Invader, yeah. yeah, yeah. Built yeah. in Wales with a little dragon yeah. logo on the on the, the bonnet. Right. There was one on event. Recently. Yeah. Well, yeah it might, have been, it might have been East, East Riding as well. Could have been, yeah. Yeah. Very, that's his... Um, Fabio? Yeah, it's the uh, Scorderoo. It's the one that was built by Texpar. <laughs> a little bit clanky. Mm. If that's it's a, still going, it's going, isn't it? If that's, a, if that's such a word. Do we, you were talking last night, you know, before we finished, about at the end of the event there's always like a class of minis or whatever. Jim Clark <coughs> and Keredigion, because it's also around the BRC, mm. last year we had the, uh, the military, the Land Rovers. Now, they have always been a fixture in the British Championship since I can remember, and it's always very, you know, intense rivalry between the various branches of the services, mm. but they'll stop and pull people out of ditches. No, they, yeah, I think it stopped for quite a lot of years. I think they're sort of trying to get them back in, get, in, get them back rallying again now. Yeah. It's fantastic that, the, you know, the camaraderie between all the crews, but it sort of got lost at one time. Anyway, hopefully they're here to stay. Fingers crossed. Yeah. John Woodward and Kevin Ilkin, uh, Mulcar Club is John. Uh, Mulcar Club and Whitchurch, we'll have to and Kelvin Ilkin Whitchurch. is uh, Whitchurch, yeah. yeah. In the under 2000cc class. Sounded quite a fit car, that. One of the things I've always loved about this kind of event is that you can hear the echo of the car coming around. The I mean, okay, once they've, once they've gone around the corner and they're away down towards the the, the finish, I said, you know, we're at the kind of high point of the uh, the stage, and I dare say it's actually getting brighter. Whisper it, but um, the noise of the car just <coughs> echoing up the valley, just that sounds magical. Well, this is an Evo coming up here, a Subaru, if you can tell, can't you? <laughs> yeah, right. Somebody. Yeah, right. Like Twinkle in your eye. Yeah. Yeah. The 63, what is it? Mr. MacArthur's name on the, uh, the yep, side right. of the car. Yeah, East Ayrshire Car Club, Scottish uh, registered members. Chris Robertson, East Ayrshire again. You can tell that's under 2,000 cc's. It's only fit, isn't it? It did. And there were a couple of uh, sunbeams. It was. Yeah. And then there was an Avenger, just after me saying, yeah. funny that we haven't seen any Avenger. Yeah. And then there was, uh, there was a flurry, what do you call it? It was a collective noun for minis. There was a little flurry of them towards the, yeah, the, the end of the field. Yeah, gaggle. Like just gone off. Further. And the uh, laddie from down our area, Danny Cowell. Uh, well, sorry, the laddie that's just been laid to rest. Uh, Dennis Quinn uh, drove on uh, in a few road rallies with reasonable success. And I think actually, yeah, he actually crushed it. But yeah, uh, very good handling car. Danny Cowell drove on in the. Uh, was it the Manx last year? And I think he retired in the last stage. Yeah, you see them occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> Another pro tyre competitor, 86. Sorry, fella, making you work here. Wrestling with a very soggy entry list. Mal Boy and Brian Stubbs, both pro tyre registered. You know, a two litre, under two, under 2,000 cc escort. Were the Sambas a single make championship at one point, or was that me making things up? Okay. There were a few around, and you still... Like you... Owen Jenkins draw one, he was, he was there, didn't they, Road Rally? He was quite successful in it. With a surname like Jenkins, he has to be. We'll claim him anyway. There's a laddie around from... Uh, a guy from Morecambe uh, used to build them and prepare them for rallying in, in, 
uh, for um, mo well, racing and, t and time trials and stuff. That was Ernie Larton, uh, sort of Larton Autosport, and he, he did that had that business for many many years, uh, doing and, uh, doing uh, sambas. and Steve Hallmark, both pro tire registered. David Wright's now officially on the, the list of retirements, we're told. So, if you're just joining us, there's a, a few incidents this morning on this uh, second stage. We actually got through the stage we were on last night. I mean, a big old jump. You know, there were sparks and all sorts of you know, shenanigans, but everybody kind of got through the stage. And then the long stage last night was where we had the, the John Stone incident. Um, by the sounds of it, first couple of stages this morning have been. Um, <laughs> I've seen a, seen a few <laughs> things. <laughs> oh, they're still halfway, are they? Yep. Let's just go flicking back and forth to have a quick look at uh, at comments, and then I'll take a look at the leaderboard again. So we're on stage eight this morning. It's uh, a single loop of four stages this morning. Oh, it is running, because this overheated on the way to stage one yesterday, and we were disappointed that we weren't going to see it, so good that it's out this morning. Listen to that. I mean, that's a pig to drive. You can see it, can't you? He's wrestling with it. Those spectators that we were with last night, they were, they were devastated, because they really wanted to see it. One of the lads had never seen a, a quattro on a stage. So, uh, oh, full marks. Well, I'm glad they got that back out. That was, uh, that was disappointing last night. Again, I'm battling with the, uh, with the, with the poor mobile signal. John O'Kane from, from the Isle of Sky. Fiesta ST. Very underrated car, those. Good car to buy if you're going to rally. Oh. Did we, uh, looking at producer Wayne, did you know that the coverage went down for a little while? There's a comment that the. Ah, uh, uh, it says lost all coverage now and then it's back. And also, back to our conversation, Phil, about Gilburn Invaders. David Roberts. Hello, David. My father had one many years ago. I had to strip it down to repair the outer laddie, ladder chassis on it. <laughs> and he's put some curious emojis on the end of it. So thank you, David. But yeah, you do see the odd... I mean, there was one on a, on a stage. And they also did um, an estate version, which is uh, rarer than hen's teeth, I think they say. <coughs> Morris and Steve Harris in the Fiesta R2000, not an R2, R2000, like an evolution model of the R2, I believe. Uh, 200 it was, yeah. Mm. That's the, so it's from one quite, I won't say old, but certainly one of the, the previous generations of Fiesta that we saw a minute or two ago to, to pretty much bang up to date. Uh, obviously not an R5. Yeah, because it... Didn't they, have a, didn't they have a grey one, Wayne, that M Sport were doing, is it? Yeah, Wayne's nodding. That's the guy from Mulk or Mick something or other. He, 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 he well, it doesn't narrow it down, Keith, Phil. Sorry. That's Keith Robin coming in the historic forensic. They're all Keith. Ain't going well. It's got to be quote of the day, Phil. There's a guy from Mull Muck something. <laughs> Did I see Doctor on the on the side window? No, no, it's Keith Rob. Oh no, it might yeah. have been might have been driver. Sorry. Peter Carstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Say. Oh. How to spend your day away from the surgery? Lower my drivers. It's <laughs> quite a few on this event, and oh, some yeah. of your cars. Thinking about the Mini, I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. All the Mini, I've got yeah, lots of four wheels on. And each day it was fantastic. And then the Escorts came out, and the Mexicos, mm. and. You, even with a, a mini engine, a 1293, there was only two or three drivers in the northwest could get anywhere near Mexico, because the Mexico handled so well. 
but it was a fantastic experience at the time. Ah. There's a message coming through, I think, from Anthony Allery. Oh. Hit a wall. Ah, 95 this is. Nick Herb and Oliver Matheson. Director. Oh. Certainly different, yeah. From Beverly Motor Club, Pro Tire Registered, and Genesis G40. He's gone off. Oh, off. As we, as we fall down the bank to have a look at the monitor. Yeah, and you make all the best. Oh. oh. Go on, go on. Not quite. That thing was spreading the floor on the car. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully the spectators are now well drilled, so they know exactly what to do. Oh, he's close, he's rocking. <coughs> no, next car then. The Metro, the, uh... the, the 4R2, as I mentioned last night. Yeah. In this mockery and uh, Kirsty Mockery. That's how you pronounce it in the Rover Metro. Wander around to the monitor again. Yeah, enough room to get through. There, I think. So, fingers crossed that we get the Ginetta back on. Thanks, Phil. Oh, and the Ginetta's back on. Good. So, everyone that's been off there has got going again. <clears throat> 104. Jarvis and Paul Train, Humberside Motor Club. Not registered with the Pro Tire Championship. Well, we still talk about them. Yeah. <laughs> BMW 3 Series, we talked about last night. BMW 3 Series, we talked about last night. Boy, so really clucking Eilish Baxter, both BTRDA registered. The 325 BMW. Manx registered uh, BMW. Is it? I didn't notice. VMN. Here's another question for you. We're talking about Manx registered cars. Getting the old grey matter going this morning. Can you think of another well-known Manx registered cars? Loads of different really puzzled look on his face. I'm thinking going back, ooh, quite a while. Give me a clue. They had, uh, they had fours in the numbers, number plate as well. Ah. Pass. Audi Sport UK used to register their quattros on the Isle of Man. Yeah. yeah. So they had Manx yeah. registration. Well, they only 40, eh? No, he's not. Brian Watson, who was that, 48? Shh, you. He's gone off. Another one gone off? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, the spectators are across the other side of the valley. And, oh, yes. Same as the Ginetta. Go on, go on. Nope. The good news is that the spectators are well practiced now at getting them out of that particular sticky spot. And indeed, there they are. So, it's catching a few people out that corner. <coughs> Honda. Yeah, we normally see a couple of Civics on these events. One, two, one, one, two. Ryan Ingram. Ryan Ingram, Ian Callum McDoodle, Mool Car Club. The Honda Civic. <coughs> Fabulous car. Real high revers. Yeah. 
Yeah. Pastoral yeah. hour, isn't it? I don't think she'll make it. I think so. You get the odd <laughs> waft, don't you? And the whole generation of Annie fans growing up going, mm. If you know, you know. Is he rallying not just for the for the visual senses? I used to use SOSHC in my entrance. Uh, it's like a synthetic coil. 47, wow. Oh, no. oh yeah, 47. Hmm, gosh. Missed that one. I'll do battle with the uh, the mobile signal again in a second. That's the that Mulcark and David Mulgleish, Gil Dogleish, and the brothers or father and son. Evo 9. Uh, Anthony's just posted an update um, that uh, Anthony Allery, we mentioned earlier, has hit a wall and has pulled up. And uh, somebody's coming to make you both OK. And uh, Anthony's replied, car not so good. So, not great, eh? So, a few people off on this stage then. We're on stage eight, the second one of this morning's loop. After I got it so wrong with that Clio earlier, I'm not even going to speculate anymore. Callum uh -huh. McLeod and Laura McLeod in the fourth shot mark two. The Pinto engine car, would you imagine? All right, we've got times then from stage nine. And uh, Callum Black's extended his lead now. 23 seconds uh, it is now. Oh, no, as you were. Of course, um, Dave Rock's retired, so it's Neil Roscoe now up to second. So that's the 41-second uh, lead now. Callum Black and Jack Morton have over uh, Neil Roscoe and Andrew Ruffhead. Mark McCulloch and Michael Hendry in third. One minute 14 down on the leader. Then Rory Young and Alan Cathers in the Citroen, 1 minute 16, so two seconds off the Proton. Uh, so podium finish potentially up for grabs. Uh, Michael Binney, Claire Mole, fifth overall, second in class, 1 minute 49 down on the leaders. William Hill, Richard Morton Crozier, sixth overall, third in class, 2 minutes 36 down. So the field now starting to get spread out. Appears to be, yeah. <laughs> Caroline Lodge co-driving for that was a Citroen, obviously. Um, for Jimmy Hall, Aiden Valley Motor Club members. One. I'm just looking here. Ooh, not good news for Darren, I'm afraid. Brad Cole and Neil Coleman are eighth overall, although obviously more times to come. Mm. So a total of 39.08 for them. Two minutes 45 off the lead. And Darren, car 23, is a 39.31. So, so what's that, 20, 23 seconds off Brad's time. So, ooh. But Brad's had a miserable year, though, hasn't he? He's had a lot of yeah. DNFs. Yeah, yeah, he has. I um, don't know what's going on in Darren's head at the moment. He might just be taking it easy. He's got, he's got plenty of points on the board. Yeah. He might not be worth risking everything on this event or waiting till last. Two or three, and if you leave it too too far, he'll not be able to catch and make up the time on the stages. Plus, of course, you've got the, the drop scores, so Brad has to make everything count because he's got yeah. so many zeros on the on yeah. the board. Whereas uh, Darren can can relax. Yeah. He's got it down, well and get another second, probably take yeah. it. But... Ninety-eight. Yeah, it is. Nice green colour. Of Sarah Hunter and James Braithwaite from Mull Car Club in the Peugeot 205. Well, we were joking last night that Mull Car Club must have bought a bus party over for this because there's uh, there's lots of them. Seems to be, yeah. And um, well and we also talked about the Mull event last night itself. It's uh, something that you resisted for doing, and now you're a fan. I am. Yes, I am. I'm a nature lover. There's a Mark One Escort. First one of two, if I remember correctly, from last night. Car 93. Chris Thompson and Peter Gibson from the steady run historic Ford Escort Mark 1. I know we say that towards the 
second half of the field every time but it is good to see a mix of cars particularly top end of the field it's you know fiesta 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 fabia hyundai fiesta so you know by the time you get down to the uh the the happy running people fries car like and yeah it's hard to say explain it really but you got to find your own level in life in competition and uh, it's worth saying you know okay we talked about your birthday and everything else but you won your class on this event last year you're still out competing you were competing out last weekend yeah. uh, so um, you're still enjoying rallying yeah I am very much so despite, yeah despite the idiot alongside you asking you questions all the time yeah the thing is what do you do if you give up rallying I like, I like walking I like reading I like walking me dog like but this is something like, like it gives you a real bus doing this and you get away you meet so many people I fantastic it's not so much like it used to be but you meet people on the events Everybody speaks to each other, there's no, no nastiness. But it's yeah. nice that, you know, there are events like, I guess, this one, potentially down or the Manx, where you've got to, you know, book a ferry and all the rest of it. So, potentially, you stay an extra night to get the, the ferry back on the Monday morning or whatever it is. Yeah. So, Sunday night, everyone's out and having meals and having drinks and, you know, particularly last year when Manx was the, was the final round. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't mention the Manx, yeah. Yeah, it was really happy. I you, wasn't you, going to. <laughs> Why shouldn't I mention the Manx, Phil? Because I had too much to drink. I made a fool of myself. But I had a good time and I regretted it the next morning. I've seen the pictures. Blasted all over bloody WhatsApp. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, yeah. Never again. You always say never again, but you never learn by your mistakes. Well done, Phil. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie Miller and Ian McCulloch, um, Citroen CR2 Max. Uh, I can't see what DCC car club, what's that one? I can't remember. DCC. Any ideas? Dundee car club, maybe? They're registered for a um, Scottish championship, so presumably it's a, it's a Scottish club. Oh. The, uh, the midges are back. I thought we'd got away with them this morning, certainly after being in the trees and in the in the dusk last night, but nope, we've got visitors again this morning. sound echoing across the valley towards mm. us. Class three of that's from the 16 cc, I think. Uh, Sounded good. Mm. Yeah. Class three. Yeah. Let's quickly flip back to the comments. So wherever you are watching us today, hello, you're very welcome. <laughs> Carol Cobbett must be one of the, the most local viewers. Hello from Loch Fine. Well, that's just down the road. Mm. Hey, oh, me. This crest is father and son. 80, 88. Yeah, this guy's done lots of rallies in the past, hundreds of rallies. He's a big road rally man now, he's into, he's into stages. Yeah, very competitive. But he'll win the class, no doubt. Takes the job really serious. He's from the Clitheroe area, around that area. Who's Bernie Rooney then, Phil? <laughs> Bernie's a... What did I say? <laughs> He's posted on the, uh, on, the, on the Facebook comments, Phil Sandon, my hero. <laughs> I first met him when I got involved with Drew Gallagher. He was a, a big friend of Drew Gallagher's and family. And uh, his lovely man he helped the family. When Drew passed away, he helped uh, his wife a lot to help her sort herself out. And he's been a family friend for years, and I've known him for a long time. And uh, he's a real character. And he's had some fantastic rally cars, and he's had a Lancia Stratus. He had an Audi Quattro, and many cars, and he also lent some of the cars to Drew to, to drive, and Andrew, his son, to drive. And he's a, he's a real, real character. I can't say any more about Bernie. Uh, 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 it's 
got the Rally 3 car. Is it? Sounded like it. Okay. Lindsay Henderson, that, and Sue Hind. Like I said, this last night, Sue Hind's uh, married to Tom Hind, who sits in with Ray Patterson. And Lindsay Henderson's father, uh, he's rallied a lot of years. Don't think he does much now, Walter Henderson. I think we have a winner from our most far away viewer. Good evening, I guess. Good night, almost, to David Wills. Hello from Wellington, New Zealand. There you go. You get the prize. Well, if there, was, if there was a prize, then you'd win it. We had loads of New Zealand um, spectators uh, watching us, or rally fans watching us, when we had Hayden Padden on the uh, on the Keradigion last year. Is there Eileen Forrest and John Forrest, Mr. Beachy? Championship registered. If you are just joining us, where have you been? We're on stage eight, second stage of the day, and it's day two of the Dunoon Presents Rally Argyle, round five of the Pro Tire Motorsport UK Asphalt Rally Championship, uh, standing stage side, along with producer Wayne and cameraman Phil, who's a couple hundred yards down the stage from where we are. Uh, it's Mark James and uh, accompanying me, birthday boy, Phil Sandham. And we were on stage three last night, in the dark and the midges and the rain, and, uh, well, with, with daylight, the rain has stopped, but the, the midges have come out, Phil. Yep, yep, they don't, they're very rel relentless. <laughs> 87, that's... Uh... That's Andy Scott and Ian Robertson, uh, both pro tyre registered. In a uh, Escort Mark II, that's uh, over two litre. Sounded all right, but, uh, well down the running order. But we've not even talked about drop scores properly yet, have we? Because it's eight rounds, two of them are double headers now because the, the final round on Otterburn has been cancelled because the military need the, the land back and so they've said basically no motorsport events. So the Isle of Man was a, was a double header and now Keridigion on uh, the first weekend of September will be a double header. Eight rounds, but only six to count. So at the moment, yes, we know who's leading the championship. It's Neil Roskill, but the maths start to come into play, Phil. Yeah, it's a difficult one to sort of, if you have to talk about really, you just don't know what's going to happen. Let's get this rally out of the way and you can sort of stand back and look at the scores, what you need to do. Some, obviously some crews won't want, the, won't want to do all the events, but you can't afford to, but you've got to weigh up what you need to do to, to win. So if you've retired on a previous event, you get one point, so that's, that's the score you need to drop. If you've got, say, 13 or 14 points, that's your lowest score. That's a bad one to drop. That'll make a lot of difference in your, your total scores. So it's, you've got to, so it's a difficult one to, to balance. But the down rally is uh, probably the one you make all the decisions on in the one in Northern Ireland. Yep. And after that, then it's really, if, if it was possible, this would have been a good double header, but it was too late to put it in, I think. Because like night stage and then at fourth, I mean six stages last night, it would be an idea really. But then, you, but then you'd, you'd lose, yeah, lost the 14 miler and lost yeah. one of the two milers, the, the little ones. But you wouldn't have known that at the time, but it would have been a bad decision, I suppose, if that had happened. But so it goes to it goes to Wales, the double header. You see, we say that, and I'm thinking back to last year in Keradigion. First stage was stopped because uh, Keith Cronin went off, and that was a 20 miler. Mm, that nice. was a big old chunk of, of stage mileage to lose. That's horrendous. You were competitive and lose that sort of mileage the minute cost a more than Civic with uh, hazard lights going, but yeah. He, yeah, he seems to be going all right. Andrew, Andrew McKinnon and Charlie McKenzie, Highland Car Club, and all of them. Yeah, seems to be going okay. Don't know what the uh, why, why the hazard lights were on. Very popular in Ireland, or Civics. Seems to be the cars are dropping into them. They're going to escort, so they're fired. They're competitive, competitive. So there's a circuit championship for, uh, for Civics in the UK as well. I'm trying to think, is it BRSCC runs it? It's quite popular, it gets live streamed. It's on the same bill as uh, TCR UK. I get much sport news, I never look at the racing, the saloon cars, because skip right past, you get two rallying pages, maybe historic, and that's it. It's not like it used to be. No, don't get me started on autosport. Oh. Oh, I've never seen that in years. There's no rallying in it these days. It's all Formula One. Oh. 109. 109, I can tell it's Liam Richardson and Darren Kennedy, both Highland Car Club members, and the Subaru and Pretzel. Burble. Mm. And we've 
we've, we've talked about you know the sounds coming across the valley and all the rest of it and the the sound a, a decent mark ii makes um and the quattro when it came past us the sport quattro and that sort of burble and the roar and the five cylinders and everything else but actually the impressors make a, a nice lumpy sound when they go past you don't they and also the the, the works cars there's that little sort of um that whistle from the uh from the uh from the from the valve yeah, yeah. Black Mark II coming. Yep. 116, 116. Sandy Arbuth Knot and Ian Arbuth Knot. 63 cars in. <laughs> See, they're all very thick car like, but it's difficult to see how, how fast they're going. Look at the stage sound, it's probably well down. I'm going to be sad again now and talk about registration numbers. DEP, that's from down my way. EP was a, was a Welsh registration, so kind of um, possibly Swansea, Carmarthenshire kind of way when that car started out. But then when you think about the number of car preparation businesses down my way, um, particularly back from the day, then that car's probably, um, OK, it's probably, probably, he says, in the nicest way, smiling, possibly seen a few shells in its time, so uh, the old triggers broom scenario. But uh, the registration number certainly is, uh, is from down my way. No one town, they're all like that. all the counties have their own specific, specific yeah. numbers and letters you can tell where they were from. <laughs> James Lyon and Graham Mark Mains from uh, BECC and GMSC for Graham. Has he gone off? Sounds like it. properly off. Well, I think the spectators are going to have their work cut out on that one. <laughs> spectators are shouting across to us, he's really off. Yep. Oh, spectators are with him. So, fingers crossed they'll, uh, they'll work their magic again. And do you know, it's one of those things that a lot of stages have got very few spectators, or the ones that are there are very spread out. On this occasion, there's some uh, decent access to where we are, and, uh, and presumably this has got quite a reputation locally for people going on. Bobby McDonald and Martin McCabe. Bobby is from Glen Rose, Martin McCabe, Scottish Motor Sporting Club, Subaru Impreza. Let's have a wander around. They ripped a wheel off. Picked his way neatly around past where the escort's gone off. They've ripped a wheel off. Is that escort back on? No, still has. Okay. Talking of escorts, another white one. One one seven mm. coming up to the up the hill towards us. Alistair Browley and Jerry Bryden. Boricos Carto. Not a lot I can say about them, we'll see. Thank the, you. Scottish Championship. Yeah. Still a few uh, pro tire competitors to come past us. And if it's uh, Roughly the same as it was last night. One three seven should be the final car past us. You on the track, are we? Let me see if I can quick look to see if on the live results. See if there's anything in. Should be stage 10. Indeed, so. Callum Black's extended his lead now, 39. Oh no, what's 43, wasn't he? Thorin McLeod. 
121, Peugeot 205. Yeah, Roy McLaren, Ryan Urquhart, Alan Carkle again, 205 GTR. RAF MSA, we talked about the military earlier on. We, we forget that there's uh, organisations like the Royal Air Force Motorsports Association. Yeah, yeah, there used to be a guy who was on the Subaru for many years, but we've not seen it out this Didn't the RAF have a, a rescue unit as well? Pretty sure they had a, a motorsport club where they used to provide, you know, marshals and paramedics and the like on on a rescue unit. So yeah, after stage ten then, which is uh, two on from this one. So the final one in the batch of four, Callum Black leads by 39 seconds from Neil Roscoe. Mark McCulloch in third. For the 41 behind. 119 that was. That's uh, David. David McLachlan and Adam McLachlan, the Renault Clio RS2000. RS is that it's either Clio or is it an RS2000 engine? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, we talked about him last night. You did, actually, uh, repeating myself. Yeah. So let me just recap then. Callum Black and Jack Morton. Total time from uh, 10 stages of 39 minutes 12 seconds. Neil Roscoe, Andrew Ruffhead, 39.51, so 39 seconds down. Mark McCulloch and Michael Hendry in third. 40 minutes 32, so that's 120 down. Two seconds still ahead of Rory Young and Alan Cathers in the Citroen DS3. Michael Binney and Claire Mole, who are fifth overall, second in class, exactly two minutes down on Callum Black. Jock Armstrong and Hannah McKillop, uh, they are sixth overall, 317 down, two seconds ahead of Kevin Proctor and Patrick Walsh in the WRC Fiesta. Currently uh, seventh overall, fourth in class. Clive King and Ian Harrop in the Mini, Mini Cooper uh, S. Part of the gaggle of Minis, yes. what you mentioned. Yes, right, right. right. historic car to register. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so several championships represented this weekend, not just uh, the, pr the Pro Tire Motorsport UK Asphalt Championship. Just looking down the order, we haven't seen the Avenger yet, have we? So that's 1 3 1. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 Minis towards the end of the field, and the Nova. Yeah, we haven't seen the second Nova go through, have we? Yeah. Oh. No, we're waiting for him to come through. 135. Right, two. 120, this is. Oh, we had this last night. Stuart Branton and Fraser. <laughs> More car club again. <laughs> yep. Right under the crest. Two litres, under two litres. Oh, right, okay. So we've seen two of the cadets, I think. Right, we haven't seen the third. How far on is that? I think so. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, he has come through. The second Forenza, I don't think we've seen. Shame we haven't seen any Human Avengers. Sure enough, the next car through, Brian McPhail and. Uh, Sharon McCauley Murray from Mull again, of course. Where else? Uh, 131. So that hasn't been passed us so far this morning. And then I'm trying to. Because this stage went live at just after about 13 minutes past 10, something like that. Let me have a quick look at this afternoon's schedule. Another one of the minis. 129, this is. It's Craig King and Russell Jorsey. Morris Mini. Look, just to give you an idea of when we'll be back on this afternoon, about 10 to 3, we think the second running of the stage happens. So uh, we should be back on, barring any delays at. Uh, just before, or just after, I should say, I'm 10 to sure 3. Not doing over there. And uh, that will be our final live hit uh, from the event, because uh, we then have to get back down to Danoon, and then we'll put a little wrap-up together of the, uh, the interviews all being well when we get down to Danoon, and uh, upload that when we get a chance this evening. So, one live stage yesterday, two live stages today, uh, but watching all of the field through, there's the Forenza. Mm -hmm. Yeah, second one. That's Gareth Frank and Tony Hart, Molten Car Club, in the second of the Frenzies. Brings back memories. 
And that's the livery. That was the old DTV livery. Was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very uh, pronounced. Very evocative. Because yeah. you, you also see uh, there's a car, not with us this weekend, but there's a car in the old Rothmans Escort livery, which doesn't say Rothmans, obviously, because mm -hmm. uh, cigarette advertising is, uh, is not allowed these days. Uh, but it does say something similar. But the, as soon as you see that car, even if it's from a distance or you see it across the service park, you know the livery. Uh, yeah, there's a guy doing the forest event, James Stevenson Wheeler, as, as a car with that, that colour. And obviously, Jerry Fitzell, uh, Fitzell is very similar with Rothman's colours as well. As soon as you see that, you think of it, don't you? Yeah. You go back many, many years. But then the silver Chevettes and Forenzas, dealer, dealer team Vauxhall, right, yeah. which was actually a clever way of going rallying, because it was the dealers that clubbed together and said, Look, if you won't pay Vauxhall, we will, because we know that we sell cars because of it. Right. And then they give out the schemes to helping young people and up the ladder, you know, helping with the, the wind bonus wins for doing various things with the Vauxhalls. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see, I told you we hadn't seen all the, all the cadets. Stu McLaren and Eon Anderson. Tony Fall was uh, Opal Cadet? Yeah, Tony Fall was, wasn't he? Yeah. And then. Because he drove for. He drove for Opal for quite some time, didn't he? Because obviously, back in the day, Vauxhall was the, was the British brand, but they, all, but they also sold Opals in this country. Yes, I, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Then Opal Convention. Sort of. Vauxhall name died down in Rally and Opal sort of took over, didn't they? And uh, Mike Rawls run the auto home, she set up, didn't he, in this country. <laughs> One, three, six. Tommy Bates, Exxon Motor Club and Ripon Motor Club. Just replied. <laughs> ho 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 ho. Someone's just uh, ah. There's that smell again. Comment from Jack Morton, just asking us uh, on the WhatsApp group what's the weather and road conditions. So uh, they're obviously heading for service at the moment. And uh, before I had a chance to reply, Andrew Roughhead, who sat in with uh, Neil Roscoe's, replied, "Heavy snow, bad ice." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, That's Andrew. Right. If you just hold that mic, I will uh, quickly type a reply. <laughs> That's only for the first car on the road, replies Jack. We're getting near the end now, 137. Well, 137 was the last car on the road last night, but... Probably about six or seven. Another six, says Wayne. Are you watching the tracker? Yeah, so we think another six. So 137 was the last car on the road last night, but uh, potentially a few more cars to come past us before... The road reopens, we will then reposition. Uh, we've got a walk of half a mile or so, says Wayne. <laughs> oh, that's a look. Yeah, I'm a reminder that we've got to go walking with all this kit and then set up, ready to go back on for, uh, as I mentioned, about 10 to 3 this afternoon. Another mini. One, three, four, that is. Shane Gamble and Bob Ward. Historic rallies car register again. Three for us. That's like wearing that car, isn't it? It's so small. Was it you? I was. Uh, I think no. I think we were talking about this on the in the car on the way up yesterday. That somebody's posed some pictures of. The, like the, the, the that mini alongside like the Countryman, right. that's huge. And the the Fiat the original Fiat 500 yeah. next to the current Fiat 500. Now even though you think of the 500 as a small car, it's still a lot bigger than the old one. And I was trying to think, oh yeah, the other one was the 911, the original Porsche 911 alongside one of the 911s these days. And again, huge car. You've probably got in most cars, can't you put an Audi oh, the original Audi 4 against a, an Audi 4 now? Or the original, or the original Golf, yeah. Because the Golf then 
would probably be smaller than a Polo now. That's how the, the, the cars have, have, have evolved and grown up. It's not got any bigger, any no. wider, which is nope. crazy. One, three, two. Which is Kevin Hazelden and Cat Lund. Well, this was the one I was saying yesterday. I thought had done the jog, possibly in this car. Yeah, he's been riding since 1975, this car. This must be ancient, then. <laughs> Worse than me. <laughs> If you do get a chance, Le Jog, a brilliant event. I've, I've filmed it twice, as I was saying last night, and it's usually first weekend in December, yeah. and it can either... The, the weather gods can be smiling on you, or, boy, are you in for a, for a rough event. And it's, it's, uh, it starts from uh, Land's End, about 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning. First test is around the headland at um, Land's End with a stop astride and whatever, then they've got regularities and whatever. Brings you up to... Um, South Wales by sort of Saturday evening, through Wales then, Saturday night, stop in the early hours, get up again sort of nine o'clock-ish Sunday morning, all the way through Sunday, and then a sensible finish, about seven, half past seven from memory on the Sunday night. You get a night in bed Sunday night, and then when you restart on the Monday morning, you don't then get a break until Tuesday lunchtime. Yeah. You finish at John O'Groats, at about half past ten on Tuesday morning, and I can remember filming the cars kind of coming out of the gloom on Tuesday morning into a uh, into a rest halt, having having breakfast on the Tuesday morning. And boy, did they look tired! And you also got classes for some of the pre-war cars, so the big, so the Bentleys and things, which are open. So you got them in in the big, you know, the the, the sheepskin jackets and the the hoods and the and the goggles. Yep, and it's and it's December in Scotland. It's a it's a it's a belter of an event. I think we've got quite a few marshals from our club gone up and marshalled on it. I think, I think they've been quite close. Uh, they've gone through Lancashire, I'm sure, on the way yeah, up. There's, there's a couple of ways, well, a couple of ways, there's loads of ways they can go, but mm. they also, the, the, the organisers always try and, and throw in a few surprises. So if there's a Ford or there's um, a little quirky farmyard yeah. or something that they found, they'll try and route you through that way. And um, Fords been particularly. Gisborne Forest at once. Maybe you've gone through Gisborne Forest there. I'm yeah. sure there's some... Yep. There's the Avenger. Let's the last. Cannonball 3 1, Brian McPhail and Sean, Mc... Char... Sean McCauley, Murray. Soldier on. So, not the Tiger, not the one with the spoiler that we no. talked about last night, no. just a, I won't say bog standard, but you know what I mean, it's the, the road going. Um, Avenger, um, but there, there were. Under 1600 CCs, under 1600. Imagine, yeah. They were 1300 as well, early days. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. But again, the cars that you saw then competing against the Escorts. So we haven't had a single Chevette this weekend. We've had a couple of Sunbeams. Yeah. We've had a couple of Cadets. Yes. We've had that Avenger. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's been a there's been a, a cross section, and of course we had the uh, the Sport Quattro, which is <laughs> from from one extreme to another. Yeah, yeah. 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 I could have a good selection of cars. It makes it interesting for the spectators. Yeah. Not for those idiots up there shouting and bawling, but uh, David Wright's got a blown engine, I'm told. Oh. Ah, Andrew Ruffhead says they've got a throttle issue. So, so David Henderson's David Henderson went off. David Wright's got a blown engine, and Andrew said they've got a throttle issue. Hmm. But it's so it's so tight to call. You know, beginning of the season, Steve Wood, last year's champion, new car turned up East Riding, didn't even get to us, and we were on the first stage. Yeah. He went off on. Um, on one of the, the very first junctions on the stage, remember that? That uh, wasn't there, so I couldn't come. No, sorry, I was, yeah, at, yeah. I was looking at Wayne as I was saying that. Because we were, um, was Steve first on the road, second on the road? And I was with Mark Kelly, and we both kind of looked at each other. And uh, we think that may be it. Okay. So, shall we wrap things up? Okay.
So, Phil, once again, thank you very much for your company. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this morning. Better than last night. Not so many midges, not so much rain and daylight, because by the end we were both squinting at that entry list. Yeah, far better than last night. Yeah, good company. You're looking forward to the last stage, well, the next stage. Oh, have something to eat, and then we can start again. Yeah, let's go grab our sarnies. Uh, thank you for watching, wherever you are in the world. Uh, we will do it all again for the second in this afternoon's batch of stages. It is now in the UK, because obviously we have viewers all over the world. It's about 5 to 12 at lunchtime on this Saturday. Uh, we're back in about three hours' time, just under, at about 10 to 3, and that'll be our final live stream from this event. But uh, for now, have yourselves a good afternoon. We'll see you in a couple of hours.